0007, turn right, heading 185, reduce speed 182 or not. 185 on the heading 180 on the speed go fair 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 or not to 40 or me. 160 to 4, speed 124. Hello there guys, Matt here, hope you're all well and welcome back to part number two of the epic venture down to Sydney. Uh, we are back in the same place as we left off. If you've not watched part one and you want to know how these flights connect, then I suggest you do so. I'll leave the link below to the previous video. But essentially it's the same call sign, uh, Canada 33. It's the same aircraft. This is, I can't remember the reg, it's Charlie India. I'm hoping Easy Dot goes to the... Uh, back as quick as I can remember it. Charlie India Foxtrot something. I think it's India Uniform. Uh, Charlie Foxtrot India Uniform Foxtrot. I was completely wrong. But yeah, same aircraft, same stand. And uh, it's about two hours after we landed into Vancouver from uh, from Toronto. For on VATSIM, we have some ATC. Vancouver Centre's online. Let's just hope they remain on while we uh, get out of here. And uh, as I said, it's it's just a monstrous flight. If you listen to the the commentary from yesterday's video, it's it's a crazy long flight. It's the longest flight I think I've ever well, I, yeah, period. It's the longest flight I've ever done. I think uh, 15 hours and five minutes is looking to be the trip time, and that is not helped by a ridiculously strong headwind right over the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I'm going to be introducing something a little bit new in today's video, something that I'm not completely comfortable with, but I have very little choice because of the type of flight that is, and that is ETOPS. Um, a lot of you have asked about ETOPS in previous long haul videos, and I've kind of shied away from it. But I've done a little bit of research, and I, I kind of already knew what it was, and I kind of knew how to use it. But um, since the 777 came out, and you have the, the kind of in-depth features of, of the FMC and stuff like that, um, it's it's been a lot more prominent, let's say, in uh, in everyone's requests. So, uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be showing you a little bit about ETOPS. Uh, routing for us today, normally uh, out of Vancouver, if the winds are okay, they'll depart off whichever runway and then they'll just head out straight to the southwest over the Pacific. However, because of that headwind that's uh, over kind of mid, uh, well, it's kind of in the, you know, between, if you think of a map, yeah, you've got San Francisco, and then you've got Honolulu, that stretch of Pacific Ocean there, um, it is, uh, the headwind over there is ridiculous, so what we're going to be doing is taking off from here, and then we're going to be routing south, and first of all, we're going to pass over the top of Seattle, and then down, uh, just west of, uh, San Francisco, and then making a right turn out over the Pacific Ocean, flying over the top of Honolulu, and down through Fiji, that sort of way, and then into uh, into Sydney. I say that in, in a very shorthand term because it's a lot longer than that, and there's a lot more boundaries involved. But that's roughly about the direction that we're heading in. Zero fuel weight today is 189.9 uh, tons, so not max by any standards, but enough to get us there. And also fuel 129 tons of fuel gives us enough flying time for just under 17 hours. Uh, cruising initially at flight level 310, stepping up to 33, then 35, eventually landing at 38, and then 400. So we'll be going as high as flight level 400. This is basically how long this flight is. You get chance to go as high as flight level 400. It's ridiculous. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about ETOPS when I set up the aircraft, but this specific aircraft is rated for 207 minutes. Um, 1,449 miles, I'm told, by Mr. Pabari. If you don't know who he is, uh, he's the guy that leads the PMDG 777 Facebook group. So uh, we have a, an ETOPS uh, rating of, of 207, um, which I will explain kind of what that means in as little detail as I possibly can, because I still don't fully understand it, but there you go. Um, so yeah, everything is set to go. We've loaded up fuel, payload, everything else is, is on board. Uh, GSX is kind of just stationary at the moment, waiting me f for me to do something. So uh, we'll get into the flight deck, we'll get everything prepped, we'll give ATC a call, and then we will embark on this just over 15 hour venture. Okay, enjoy! Okay, so welcome back to the flight deck of Charlie Fox India Uniform Foxtrot. First of all, I want to turn on some uh, floodlights because I think they look epic. Because once we get rid of that dome light, 
we're not going to be able to see very much so let's turn on those on a little bit uh, I'll also turn on a little bit of the MCP lighting and a little bit of the radio lighting as well just a small amount there we go okay cool right first things first like any flight uh, ADIRUs I called it an ADIRS yesterday it's because I'm actually stupid and there we go I uh, will arm the emergency lights, close the guard, and then pretty much everything else is fine. We'll turn the logo light on. We're done fueling, so the passenger signs can go on. And the packs can go to auto. Everything else can stay as is for the moment. We're not in a rush today, which is nice. So we can kind of prep everything at my own leisure. Apart from the fact if ATC goes off, I'll be a little bit sad. But that's that. So first things first, FMC pause in it and we want to align everything so CY uh, VR is Vancouver and we're on Charlie 51 it probably won't let me do that as always so we'll just go for uh, the GPS position off the bat route request everything's already in there for Sydney so it's just a company route request and uh, that can go into the FMC and load ASAP, you can see we've got some doors open, we've got the cargo, the back cargo, so forward and aft cargo. Entry 2 left, entry 4 left, 2 right and 4 right. Uh, I have a feeling that catering is already done, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut those doors while that FMC is loading stuff, and then we'll go back and uh, we will load in the company route. Um, what else is there to do while we're waiting for that? Not much really. I need to tune the ATIS at some point. It's 124.6, so we'll have a listen to that while we're waiting for everything else. Uh, 124.6. Switch that across. 6,700. Temperature 13, 2.11. Altimeter 298. Fire far approaches. ILS 26 right and the ILS 26 left. Landing 26 right and 26 left, departing 26 left. Advise control and initial contact. Okay. You have Bravo. So they're departing from <laughs> wrong side. Airport, they're departing Bravo. from 26 left. Weather observation um, we're at taken Canada 0100. Zero zero zero. Moose calm, visibility 15. Sky conditions, a few at 1100. A scattered 2500. Ceiling 4300 broken. Broken 6200. Forecast 6,700. Temperature 13, 2.11. Altimeter 298. Fire far approaches. ILS 2.6 right and the ILS 2.6 left. Landing 2.6 right and 2.6 left. Departing 2.6 left. Advise control and initial contact. You have Bravo. Cool. Okay, so airport. Bravo is what we have. 2.998 is taking zero, sorry, 2.6 left for departure and uh, everything else we will get off the controller when we call him up so that's that so right, I'm just going to root copy that just in case something goes wrong and then we can go to perfinite and we can look at that so we're cruising at 300 initially apparently we're going 300 first 310 I'm going to accept it and then change some stuff so we're going 310 first uh, let me put that in please 310 first everything else is there RVSM we can set that to zero and then we can go to the VNAV page, set the transition altitude to 10,000 feet. Uh, 10,000, it's not 10,000, it's 18,000, what am I doing? Try that again, Matt, there we go. Um, good stuff, next page, next page, we can preload the descent winds in, I guess. Uh, yeah, I suppose we should probably do the legs winds first, so let's have a look what we've got. Um, let's see what levels, there is no levels, so let's go to root data and wind data load and then throw everything else in, we're going to have to load that various times throughout the flight because we're stepping from 300 or 310 all the way to 400, so that's going to change over time and then of course the descent forecast is also ready to uh, to load in, so we can do that there okay done uh, depart arrive page off 26 left departing via nothing apparently there is no departure here so it's just gonna be 26 left it may be the Vancouver 9 I can check that once I uh, get 
clearance. But apart from that, everything else seems okay. We can go back to the performance page, thrust limit, and then we can set some stuff. So we're pretty heavy, so it's there's no real D rate here apart from uh, a selected temperature, which today is 40 degrees according to Topper. And take off, we're going to be using flat 15 and 27% CG, trim 525. Takeoff gross weight is looking to be 315.9. So 315.9s in there, and then we'll take the speed. So 169 is what we need to bug on the MCP, like so. Uh, 169, please, there we go. That's set to auto, we'll just set that to the runway heading, which is 263, I think, yeah, there we go. And we'll get the initial climb off the, the controller, and if he doesn't give it us, then we'll check the charts. Okay, FMC on the left hand side, we'll just go to the legs page and you can see there 7,206 miles. That makes me slightly ill looking at that, not going to lie. Anyway, something about ETOPS, yeah. I'm gonna, probably going to confuse a lot of people and myself by, by trying to explain this. But essentially, when you fly over, and it doesn't have to be water, it could be land as well. But if you're flying over a long distance and there is nothing in the way that is adequate enough for you to land if you have an emergency or you need to divert or something then you have to plan for that eventuality so the point behind this is that uh, this is rated as I said before for 207 minutes so we need to be within 207 minutes of a suitable airfield at any given point so today because of the way our routing goes um, the first uh, alternate airport, the first adequate suitable alternate airport should we need to, to get out of there is uh, San Francisco. Um, so all you need to do is KSFO and then stick that in there and then if we want to we can put a massive range ring around it of 1449 forward slash first 1449 1449 like that and then that will give us uh, a massive range ring around San Francisco and that is essentially 207 minutes worth of, of range around from the middle of San Francisco so at any point around that circle you are 207 minutes away from San Francisco the next one is Honolulu so that's Papa Hotel November Lima and that's um, also 207 miles so 1449 miles uh, let me just do that the right way like so and then the last one is Fiji uh, or somewhere in Fiji anyway it's November Foxtrot Foxtrot November that can go in there and then we can also put the same 1449 so if it will let me zoom out that much I'll attempt to show you uh, let me go into the plan mode and then zoom all the way out it may not let me do this we'll see uh, and then we can step through the legs so if we go step 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 down 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 uh, you can see the first one there is San Francisco uh, with a ridiculously small range but you just can't scope that far out it doesn't let you we may see the rings cross here so there we go 1449 that's probably the, the cross from Honolulu and then you may see the San Francisco one there you go you see where they meet so that's the San Francisco one and the Honolulu one meeting together and in between those at some point we'll have something called an equal time point and at that point uh, at the equal time point basically you're at equal time so you're equal from either going to one or the other I'm not sure if that means uh, if you cross that equal time point uh, and you have an emergency on that equal time point I don't know if you go back or forth I guess that's the discretion of the crew but essentially, uh, it's just a way of helping you understand where you are in relativity to getting to those points. You can put the equal time points in uh, as fixes um, and also uh, a bunch of other ways. Uh, but I'm not going to do that just yet because I only have one slot left on my fix page because I was showing you the rest of it. So what I'll do is when I get into the air, I will put the equal time points in. Um, because there's two of them the, the first one is uh, just as we leave 
uh, the coast after San Francisco, and then the second one is just after Honolulu. So once we uh, once we get in the air, I'll delete Fiji, and I'll replace that with the with the equal time points. So that is the most long-winded explanation I can give you, and it's probably a load of rubbish, but it's what makes sense to me. Um, so that's how it's going to go. So if at any given point we have a problem, we're either going to San Francisco, we're either going to uh, Honolulu, or we are going to Fiji. Or, of course, if we pass Fiji, then we're going to Sydney. So there we go. Anyway, auto brake is set to RTO, and the flight directors can come on left side and right side. And we can arm LNAV and VNAV like so. Bring those in, turn the traffic rings, needles up, we want data, and then on the other side we also want needles up, we want traffic, data and terrain, and then everything else is good to go. Vancouver Centre is 133.7, so we'll be calling him very soon, and uh, once we've done that, we will be on our way. So I'm going to dim some lighting now because it's uh, awfully bright. So. Get rid of the dome light. There you go, beautiful. Did I just click on the landing lights? I do that sometimes, it's very annoying. I don't know why my frames have just disappeared. They've literally gone to 12, and I don't understand why. It was after I started putting things into the uh, the fix page. Maybe that maybe the range rings cause lags, I don't, I don't know. I've seen that happen before actually in, in certain so uh, scenarios. But there you go, anyway, it's done. Okay, so GSX, I think, is ready for us to do uh, the... Oh, push back. Okay. Uh, we'll go nose left. No, I don't want to start engines. Okay, cool. So GSX is on its way to being uh, letting us push back, so I'll arm these doors for now, and uh, we'll call Vancouver, and we'll get clearance out of here. Vancouver sent a good uh, evening at Canada 3-3 on Charlie 5-1 with Bravo. Request clearance to Sydney. Okay, Mr. 3 Heavy, Vancouver Centre, good evening. IFR clearance on request, number one. Stand by. Okay, number one. I forgot to say heavy. Remember to do that. Skyhawk 605, contact Seattle Centre, 124.20. Using the FMC as my scratch pad. Switching to one, two, four, just more two zero six zero five. Thanks. Have a good night. I never knew that this lights existed. Okay, Mr. Three, three Heavy, are you able to direct the Victoria VOR, then direct the Seattle VOR? Victoria, Yankee, Yankee, Julia. Seattle, Sierra Echo Alpha. Uh, Sierra Echo Alpha. Uh, that's affirmative. We can go direct to Victoria, then direct to Seattle, uh, Canada 3 3. Victoria 3 3, you're clear to Sydney. Via the Vancouver 8 departure. Direct to Victoria VOR. Direct to Victoria 8 VOR. Direct to Seattle VOR, then as filed. Squawk 4004. Okay, clear to uh, Seattle, sorry, it's clear to Sydney even. Uh, Vancouver 8 departure, direct Victoria, direct Seattle, then as filed, and squawk 4004, Ekander 33. Three. Three, three. Okay, 33, three, read back correct, push start approved, call this frequency for taxi with information Bravo. We'll call for taxi uh, with Bravo, Ekander 33. Three, three. Okay, so I need to make some changes here. Boop. Beach 805, are you ready for departure? Actually, I'll do it on this side. Okay, so, Beach after departure, uh, well, it's a Vancouver 8 right first, and then we want to go see how we can do this. Okay, he wants us to go to Yankee Yankee Juliet first. So we'll go Yankee Yankee Juliet, and we'll stick that over Seattle like that. And I'll bring that over the top like that. And then we'll grab that and we'll bring that over the top like that. And then, fingers crossed, 
that will send us in the right direction. Beautiful. Okay, so the Vancouver 8 departure is relatively simple. It's just climb on heading 263 until uh, ATC tell me otherwise. So, I don't know what the initial climb is though. It doesn't mention anything. Oh, there we go. ATC to maintain 7,000. So, there we go. We need to set 7,000 uh, like so. And then we Good are evening, pretty much Cooper, ready to go. Alaska 420, uh, climbing 350 for 320. Okay. Start the APU. And uh, we'll run through the checklist as well. So the before uh, pre-flight checklist, oxygen is done, flight instruments are set. And that is that done. And we can also run the before start checklist. So flight deck door closed and locked, passenger signs are on. MCP set, takeoff speed set, so you can complete. Trim is zero. Taxi and takeoff briefing, well, forever alone, so we don't really need it. And uh, we can't do the beacon just yet, so we'll just wait on that item. Are the doors all good? Everything's armed? Yes, that's correct. So we'll just wait for the APU to start, and then uh, we'll be rocking and rolling. I'm going to turn on the fuel pumps now, and the center ones too. And once the APU starts, we can uh, get rid of the ground connections and get underway. Clear that from the scratch pad, don't need it anymore for us. Reserve 4, I'm going to turn the transponder on now. Our APU is running, so we can disconnect the ground power, like so. Beach 385, your and we can also get rid of the ground connections to you. PA395, copy. Like so. And then the beacon light now can go on. Jetway can go too. Bring the checklist back up. That's the checklist completed. And then the next checklist will be before taxi, which we don't need. So engine page for now. Check outside, everything's looking well. Jetway's moving at a remarkable rate. It's uh, it's a bit rainy. It's a bit rainy indeed. Okay, release parking brakes, start the clock. On the push, we'll pressurize, so right hand side first. Wait for the fault light. And the middle ones, we can start number two. Welcome to Vatsim. Wait for the cutout on number two. And start one. I don't know why my frame rates have just died. I, I really want to say it's the way I program the FMC with the range rings. Because I swear I've seen it before where it does that. But, uh, whatever, it's probably not. I don't know. Look at that terrain just out to the, uh, the northeast. Okay, so flight control check. Page up, and uh, that's not that page. Here we go. Full left, full right, rudders two, full left, full right, flap 15, trim 525. 
525 set. Uh, we can go back to the checklist. Uh, we're done with everything else now, to be honest, so we can get rid of the APU. We're on two good starts. Anti ice is not required. Recall checked. Water brake set. Flight controls checked. Ground equipment is clear. And that's the checklist done. Okay. So, turn offs and taxi. And we will call for taxi. Air Canada 33 three, request taxi with Bravo. Air Canada 33, three, thank you for Bravo. Runway 26 left. Taxi via. We're in C. Papa, I think we best for you. Taxi via Papa, Mike, Juliet, Hotel, Delta. Hold short, 26 left. Uh, Papa, Mike, uh, Juliet, and Delta for 26 left. Air Canada 33. Three. It's Juliet, Hotel, Delta. Uh, Juliet, Hotel, then Delta. Uh, we can see that. Air Canada 33, three, thanks. So, Canada 33, three, that's correct, thanks. Okay, so Juliet and then Hotel and Delta. Right, so, parking brake released. It's like a maze, this place. Bit of power. Beach Deep Liner 5, Comox Altimeter 2, Liner 93. Taxi cam, why not? I know the 200 doesn't have one, but there you go. Yeah, so the ch I think the chart that I have is slightly outdated because um, what I'm supposed to be on here is Juliet Bravo, and he said pa Papa or Papa in a really posh way. So we'll just have a look at the signs anyway, because the um, the Vancouver scenery will be uh, more up to date than my charts will. Unless I'm on the wrong. No, I, I'm, on the, I'm at the right place. I'm at the right place. So if I look here now, so this is Juliet going left to right, which is essentially all I need to do. I don't know why he was trying to send me via Papa. Because Juliet runs onto Hotel, which then runs onto Delta, yeah, so that's essentially what we need to do, is go onto Juliet, which is out to the left here. And then down to, uh, to Delta.
Air Canada 33, heavy departure of me on this frequency. Winds 120 at 6, runway 26 left, clear for takeoff. Departure with you, 26 left, clear for takeoff, Air Canada 33, heavy. Okay, so we're clear for takeoff. Strobe lights on, landing lights on. No messing around, roll on, roll off. Approach path is clear. Weather radar can come on. Okay, let's go. Sydney, here we come. Start the clock. 55%. Stable. Ninety six point five per cent and one set eighty knots. Straight climb. Gear up. Heading select. Perfectly trimmed. So nice. power. Okay, so we'll plug in at flat five speed for now. Autopilot in, heading select, flat five. Two camera three three, we identified three thousand six hundred. Turn left direct to Victoria VLR, then as far. Left direct to Victoria, then as far, they're coming to 3 3. Left direct to Victoria, LNAV. We'll swell it off. Put the speed bug back in, accelerate now. Flap one. And I forgot to do the 4 4 take on checklist again. Great. Good old Matt. Okay, flap up. Lights can come off. So let me click them. There we go. And the light light can also come off too.
Oakland, good evening there, Canada, 33 heavy, flight level 310, inbound to Point Reyes. Air Canada, 33, Oakland, Center Rush. We're with 23, we're probably on heading 140 now, sir. Well, good morning from an extremely tired uh, Canada 3-3. 12 hours, 27 minutes on the clock at the moment. We still have a little bit of time to run. Let's have a look. Still got 956 miles to run and uh, landing 2156 Zulu. It's currently 1937, so we've still got maybe two and a bit, three hours left to go. Uh, just at flight level 380 at the moment, we had planned to step up to 400 uh, at some point. However, if you see here, our maximum flight level at the moment is 391, so we're, uh, we're recommended 380. So we're going to be remaining at 380 for the moment, and hopefully by the time we get to Istan, we'll be light enough to climb to uh, to 400. And if not, we'll just wait until the, uh, the VNAV page says that we're safe to do so. Tried to record a time lapse of the uh, of the sunrise, but I don't know what happens with P3D. It doesn't really do the sunrise properly. It kind of comes up in pixels, so the sunrise footage wasn't usable really. So it's kind of just a transition from completely pitch black to a little bit morning, and then to kind of full blown daytime. I don't really know at this time of year what sort of uh, time the sun rises in Australia and sets, uh, but I know we'll be landing at about 9.30 local a.m., so that means that it will be well and truly daylight. So, for those of you that complained in the last video about it being constantly dark, then uh, you, uh, well, you'll be treated to daylight. Interesting thing about on the ground at Vancouver, I've been learning a lot as we've been on the way down to Sydney. Um, rem remember, even the frame rates were really bad. Well, it was as soon as I put those fixes, those range ring fixes in. Um, or those fixes, fixes, range rings, double fixes, and it makes sense. Um, apparently, when you do that, your frame rates drop by 20, which was extremely annoying. So I've taken them out uh, completely. There's no fixes in anymore, and my frame rate's up at 45. So there you go. Even when I was crossing the, uh, the Pacific, the North Pacific, as I entered the ocean, um, my frame rates were still at like 20. And I assumed that it was because we were crossing San Francisco, and there was an event on, and it was pretty busy, but... Nah, it's, it still shouldn't affect it that much. Anyway, so I deleted the range rings, and uh, and there we go. So, everything is set for uh, an on-time on time arrival, even. Remember, it was 15 hours and 5 minutes total flying time. And there's that headwind that I'm talking about. 95 knots from the right-hand side of us. So it just slowed us down to 435 ground speed, which is never very fun. However, when we did leave uh, Vancouver, there was a nice bit of a tailwind over Seattle, but then that died down, so... Ah, well, never mind. Anyway, about another three hours to run, and uh, then we'll be uh, setting up for the approach and uh, starting our descent into uh, the Sydney. I don't think I've ever talked to you in the cruise before. It feels weird. Normally it's just a uh, departure and arrival, so there we go. Anyway, I'll speak to you uh, once we get a little bit further along the way. Okay then, so we're making good progress, just four hour, uh, 14 hours even, four hours, four, 14 hours and 8 minutes in, and we have, uh, let's see, 203 miles to run, which means we need to program the arrival. I've kind of woken up a little bit now, feel a little less groggy, life is all good. Okay, so, uh, planning to land on runway 34 left. Um, I have a feeling that they may land 34 right, but the taxi to the terminal from 34 left is considerably... Uh, smaller than or shorter than 34 right so I'm just gonna land on 34 left and if ATC come on and change it then fair enough the wind is from the northeast at 19 knots so it's a little bit gusty uh, and the visibility is fantastic there's some clouds at 4500 feet and then at flight level 130 uh, temperature is 24 degrees and 1018 is a pressure setting so it's a relatively nice day apart from the wind uh, but anyway uh, we're landing as I said ILS uh, Zulu, 3-4 left, 
and then we are in on the Maran 1, the Maran transition, and then that will go in right there with no problem. Uh, so it goes Maran, then Whale, then Prawn, then Manfa apparently. Uh, oh, actually no, because that's for the other runway, so there you go. So we just close those gaps in, like so, and then we'll go to the init ref pay. Actually, first of all, we'll set the transition forecast. Transition level is 110, and init ref. So our landing weight, let me have a look at the top of my file. Landing weight is 200.7, or 200.8. So 200.8 to go into the gross weight, and we'll land with flat 30, so 137, and everything else is set to go. 270 feet is our minimums, so I'll set that now. Fill that in, 270. Okay, I'll always go off my tent, how annoying. Here we go, and we'll be using auto brake 1 uh, with idle reverse, because uh, we'll be heading to terminal 1 today which apparently is just off to the left of runway 3 for left, so that's all good. So everything is set, nothing really else to do. It's uh, still a lot of sea at the moment, we're still we're in the South Pacific Ocean now, so we crossed the, uh, from the north, now we're heading towards the South Pacific. But yeah, there's the moon, very nice. And uh, we should be landing in about... 40 minutes, I would say. 50 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes. 21.23, 21.59, hmm, maybe not, maybe 30, maybe 40. Who knows? However, almost there, finally. And just as I say all that, <laughs> ATC comes online, so there we go. Uh, it's Melbourne Center, 125.0 wants us first, so I'll give him a shout. 125.0, it's the morning for them, so it makes sense for them to be online. Marvin Center, good morning, Air Canada 33 Heavy, flight level 380, inbound to Marvin. Air Canada 33 Grey, Melbourne Center, Air Squawk 3244. Air Squawk 3244, Air Canada 33. Three. 3244 set. 6.25 is the ATIS for Sydney. Oh, Sydney approaches. Yeah, yeah, kind of 34, you are identified. Uh, two, two Sydney by miles, my route maintained flight level 380 and uh, start clearing to uh, Clear to Sydney via Marlin, flight plan route, maintain 380, and we're ready to copy. I counted the 33. Yeah, kind of 33, start clear to be a Marlin. On arrival, runway 34 left, when ready, descend flight level 250. Marlon, one arrival, 34 left, and descend when ready, flight level 250. I count it at 33. Well, <laughs> there we go. That's exactly what I planned. I thought I'd have ended up being given 34 right, to be honest, but there we go. Nice. Maybe 34 right is the departing runway. But uh, anyway, we've been cleared to flight level 250 when ready, so we'll set that in. And uh, we'll give. Actually, I wonder if I can make COM2 work or VHF2 work on this. It might allow it. I don't know. I've never tried. Uh, you have to kind of... Oh, is it using the center one? No, I don't, I, I don't... I'm scared to try it just in case it screws up. But you can sometimes on Batsim have both comms working. That's on the left, and that's on the right. If I just do that... Nah. It's not gonna work, is it? I don't mind. Just approaching top of descent now. Two miles to go. Turn the seatbelt signs on. Everyone sit down. I want to see if I can reset that checklist, actually, because it's bugging me. Uh, item override. There we go. Normal. After takeoff. Descent. Here we go. Recall. Checked. Notes. Checked. Auto brake set. One. Landing data set. And we'll just put that on the left-hand side. So, uh, 137 is the approach speed. So, we'll come in at 142. 
and minimum is 270 feet. Approach briefing completed. Landing on 3 4 left. So the next is just the approach checklist when we pass transition. And down we go. Oh, that's so weird. Descending after 14 hours and 20 minutes of flying. And it was 14 hours and 33 minutes since we started the engines. It's amazing how machines like this can just keep going and going and going without any problems. It's just insane. But we still have a headwind, so there's that. But uh, yeah, we pretty much have full ATC, which is fantastic. So uh, we have Melbourne, and then he's going to hand us to Sydney. Uh, approach, he's going to hand us to Sydney Tower. So there's that. So it's, uh, it's very good. I, I'm still impressed that we can't see any land. There's literally nothing in front of us. It's just an abyss of blue water. What are the colour of this water? I don't know why I just said that. It's very good. And there's a few uh, bits of traffic knocking around in the yeah. Melbourne FIR, so you'll hear them lagging as they talk, <laughs> apparently. Because Australia and the internet doesn't go hand in hand. But everything is looking great. Uh, uh, 135 miles to go. What I will do is stick the turbulence on as well. It's quite fitting, actually, that I'll be landing this in Sydney, and then 11 hours after I land, we'll be taking off again from Sydney for world flight. So it's actually quite fitting that I did this flight. I didn't even plan for that to happen. It just did. So, yeah, landing in Sydney to depart from Sydney. Awesome. Sydney is a great place. I, I love I love the scenery for it, um, and, and it's it's a really fitting place to hold an event like World Flight. It's just it's beautiful all around, um, especially now Flight Tampa has the scenery. It's just fantastic. Through a layer of cloud there. There's still no land though. It's kind of weird. That looks quite nice with the moon over there. That really does look nice actually. Wow. That would be a great screenshot. I'll bring that in a little bit. And then you could blur all this out and just have that in focus. That would be really nice. I may do that. I may do that. I'm hoping he gives me a further descent. So I don't want to level off at 250 if I can help it. No, we're gonna level out. Sad times. Sorry, uh, Qantas 226, can you just repeat that last bit, please? Uh, Qantas 226, have you received your airways clearance yet? Uh, Qantas 226, I don't believe so. I was the flight plan, but I haven't received any clearance. Okay, I don't think this guy quite gets what he's being offered. And uh, okay, let's have three D to the one zero thousand and uh Sydney Q and H one zero one eight. This on one zero thousand, one zero one eight, no Canada three three. We've got a lot of catching up to do with this profile. Which slightly saddens me, but we'll try. Set the Q&H, 1018. 6, 7, 8. Push it in, 018 set. Let's see how quickly we can catch this up. Air Canada 33, contact uh, Sydney approach now, 124 decimal 4. Have a good evening. Good luck. 124 decimal 4, Air Canada 33, thanks. Bye bye. Center, you have.
So you good day, Canada three three through flight level one seven six descending to one zero thousand triple seven with information Bravo. The center maintain eight thousand one zero one eight at Canada three three. More speed breakouts. Actually, quite a lot of speed break. Need to really kill this rate or increase this rate of descent. There we go, that's more like it. 4,000 feet to go until we're back on profile. There, it's coming down better now. As we come back towards the profile, we'll start to reduce it a little bit. I have no idea what that guy's saying. Uh, sorry, was that for Air Canada 33? Your microphone's extremely distorted. Air Canada 33 is going to make 5,000. Okay, that's a little better. This is going to maintain 5,000, they're kind of the 3-3. Three, three. Okay, start pulling the speed brake back in. Speed brake's back in. No should start to come up. Start to reduce the speed. Two fifty. About to pass ten, so we'll turn the lights on. Finally, we see land. 14 hours and 34 minutes later, we've spotted land. I might have to pull that speed brake out again. I don't know. I'm contemplating it, but at the same time I'm not. 265, we're allowed flat one out, but I'm not going to do anything with flats just yet. Because I don't see the point. The rate of descent should start to increase soon. Hey, 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 hey. That's way point T left heading 250. At TSAT turn left heading 250 at Canada 33. Wow, 441, request taxi to 34 left. First 441, taxi like Charlie. May I hold short on a 34 left? Charlie Lane, I'm hold short three four left. On four forty one. What's with this bouncing? This is weird. Hey, Qantas four thirty nine requesting push and start. There we go. We're out of it. That was okay. Qantas four thirty nine pushing start crew. So we're at T side heading. We should start a crew. Qantas four thirty nine. And they have a P three change of friends. Lane train six thousand six thousand. Okay, the sun maintains six thousand. I can't remember three three. See Sydney just off our 12 o'clock. There you go, look at that. Just loaded in as well. 
And the bridge should be um, over there somewhere to the right, if I remember. That freeze, though. If we look down there. There it is. That's what we flew under last year. That freeze, I think, was P3D dumping the memory. That's what I was talking about in, in the first video. Is that when it gets to a certain level of memory, it's just like, nah. And it just dumps it and you get a mini freeze. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what that's all about. I need to recent a track IR. Uh, sorry, easy dock. There we go. So we've got seven and a half miles to run till TSAT. And then we'll make the left turn. Although this, I need to turn easy dunk down a little bit, I think, because that bouncing is a little bit too ridiculous. Cons 439 request taxi run my three for left. Cons 439 taxi by Charlie. Uh, Lima, hold short, right, 3-4 left. Charlie, Lima, hold short, 3-4 left, class 439. There's Sydney. And there's heading select. The shadows off the clouds ahead of us. For those of you that were looking for the shark, as well, yeah, on the on the approaching somewhere around there, swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, so so the the That's interesting. Did it really just do that? Yeah, Sydney approach VH two two wow. seven on the ground helipad one uh, requesting VFR clearance. We had two seven one. What the hell? Yeah, I'll just stand by. Yeah, it's too good, so. Yeah, uh, three, so let's see, one, six, zero. And down at three thousand. Left turn heading one, six, zero. I'll descend to three thousand. That can be three, three. Three, three. That was beyond bizarre. Did you see that? Like, it just erased everything out of the, uh, the FMC. Uh, Sydney in the background somewhere. Oh, that's a, some sort of chimney. One two zero five is online, so we'll pre tune that. One two zero decimal five. Let's have a look. Yeah, we'll start to slow down. Yeah, we've 220 knots. And we'll take flat one. And we'll do the approach checklist, which is already done. Altimeter set 1018. And then next will be, whoops, the landing checklist. Which we're just waiting on. And if that one's set.
passing 5,000 feet now. Don't really need anything else on. Temperature's good. 23 degrees outside. What? Minus 23 degrees. Something's not right today. Something's going very wrong. First it clears the arrival out of the FMC, and now it's saying it's minus 23? It's only 4,500 feet. It shouldn't be minus 23 at this altitude. Unless there's active sky screwing up. I'm going to go into VS, I think. Just ease it off. Because uh, unless he turns me soon... We're going to be level very, very quickly. I don't want that, so... Left heading 3-0, 6-0. Left heading 0-6-0, Canada 3-3. And just as I say that, <laughs> what does he do? Turns me left. Very good. Okay, glide's just come in, so we don't really need to do much more. Just wait. We can actually reduce that rate of descent to 100 feet a minute. And uh, we'll start to slow down a bit further, so we'll do flap one speed. Left heading 360, clear line less approach, 3 4 left, we'll report established, uh, Canada 3 3. Okay, flap five. And we'll do 180 with flap five. Continue approaches of the H-227 uh, on, on the VFR and helicopter. Okay, so 227, good. Uh, Clyde's green. Perfect. Clap 15. Our camera the three three fully established. One two zero decimal five there, Canada three three, thanks, we're going up. Tiger running Air Canada three three ILS three four left nine miles. Okay, now 3 3, good afternoon, City yeah. Tower, continue approach. Continue approach, check on the 3 3. And Okay, speed's coming back nicely. We've got a flat 20. And our approach speed, 137, so 142. We'll book that in now. And flat 30. Speed brake armed. Okay, and the 32 wins out 040 at 18 knots. Follow 34 left, clear to land. Clear to land 34 left, air Canada 33. Okay, landing checklist. Is just waiting on the flaps, we'll put all the lights on. Planning check is complete, we'll clear to land. Uh, just about to see the runway, I'm happy with that. Order pilot out. My aircraft. Crosswinds from the right, so it's interesting. Turbulence, though. With departing aircraft. You can see it on TCAS there. There's also aircraft to my left at 700 feet below me, which is interesting. I don't know why there's someone there. It must be like a VFR aircraft or something. Have time to look, though. Wind is nailing me. 
And Qantas 439 ready to go at Alpha 5. Qantas 439, hold position. Hold position, Qantas 439. Holding short, 3 4 left. Wind is literally blowing me off the planet. Apparently, I can go within one bar or one dot before it's unstable, so we're okay for now. Okay, got the glide back. Sydney Tower, get a corner 696 with Charlie, requesting clearance to Melbourne. Corner 696, good afternoon, Sydney Tower, stand by another one. Holding short. 50, 40, 30, 20. Sydney Tower, good day. This is uh, VH 327. Coming in on a little Near bit of a on, crab. Um, uh, request a landing clearance inbound to land. Uh, request a landing clearance to the number one hand helipad on 10 miles to your west. So 8 miles to your west, inbound to land the helipad one. When you're braking. Uh, okay, 227, I'm going to get you to hold your current location, uh, just make two or three orbits, just need to correct some aircraft out of the way. Yeah, Roger, we'll go um, holding point at the current um, coordinates, VH227. Well, 439, line up for 934 left. Line up 34 left, class 439. Kind of the three three vacated alpha two. Okay, the three three welcome Sydney taxi to the international by Alpha Cross two five and Golf. Alpha Cross two five and Golf to international Air Canada three three. Thanks. All right, it's about a break. Strobes can come off. AP, you on? Let's see if I can see that G GA aircraft that was knocking around. No. AP you on? Transponder can go off. Where the radar can go off.
Learn to park in a straight line, that would be useful, I guess. This gate system works. I don't know. No, I don't think so. I'll just stop there. Was the gate in relativity to us? There it is. Cool. Parking brake set. Fifteen hours and six minutes. We were one minute behind schedule. One minute. What a tragedy. Ground connections, wheel chocks. One goddamn minute. So, here we are in Sydney after 15 hours and five minutes of flying. I am absolutely wrecked, but uh, it was thoroughly enjoyable, although it was just a lot of water. But yeah, the scenery on both sides was uh, was pretty exceptional. What is that? It's like a private ride aircraft. Fair enough. But yeah, here we are. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. There's that GA guy, finally. What is... Oh, it's a helicopter. Nice. Helicopter flying over the top. But yeah, I certainly enjoyed it. Very long, although there's a massive sense of achievement when you do long haul. Absolutely crazily high sense of achievement. This is really cool. Uh, but yeah, this 200 LR is a monster. 15 hours non-stop. And everyone thinks it's a 300 ER that does these uh, these sorts of legs, but it's not. It's this this little baby version with the raked wings. It's uh, it's very good. Okay, well, I don't want to bore you anymore, but uh, let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see any more of this type of flying. Uh, I am away at World Flight now for a week from uh, from Saturday. Uh, the 31st of October through to Sunday the 8th, I think it is, of November. I, w I do have some pre-recorded videos that will be going up on the channel, so don't worry, I won't be lost. But uh, if you want to watch uh, us fly around the world for charity in a proper simulator, not just in a flight simulator like this, I mean like a, a legit uh, fixed-based simulator, then head over to my Twitch channel, and I'll put that below the video. Uh, in the comment, sorry, in the description of the video, and you can go watch. It's 168 hours of non-stop flying, 45 legs around the world, all for charity. So that is where I will be for the next seven days. Okay, hope you've enjoyed yourself. Thank you very much for watching. As always, thank you for the support. And until the next time, I shall speak to you all later. Bye bye.